So I have everything set up here that I use when I'm packaging my vinyl decals. Um, I do have different ways of shipping depending on how large or small the decal is, but this is my like standard way of doing it and I'll show you in at the end of this video how I do my larger decals as well. So I've been shipping this way for about, I guess, two years now. It's definitely worked very well. I have shipped in different ways throughout the years to just kind of see what works best. And there are obviously better ways of doing it. This is just what I've, I've found where I can keep shipping at a minimal cost for my customers and keeps the decal safe. I've maybe only had two in the last few years get damaged and that was beyond my control. Sometimes things happen with USPS, but this has definitely been, I'd say, a great way to ship decals. So if you want to get some ideas, I will show y'all how I do them. So obviously I start off with my decal. Behind the decal, I will put the order slip, which has the customer's name and all of that information on it so I can keep everything together. Behind that, I will include these heavy duty cardstock. Um, I get them at Hobby Lobby in a big pack and then I cut them in half so I can use one for each order. And that just kind of keeps the decal from bending, moving around. And you can even double it up if you want to, but one's plenty for what I'm using it for. And then inside of that, I put them in these poly bags. So they keep them free of like, if it rains or anything like that, it just keeps the decal safe. Um, I always include a little alcohol prep pad so that they can use it for cleaning off their surface. So it's nice to include that. And then I will also have these little cards. They're just like credit cards. I get them on Amazon. They're pretty durable and you can reuse them over and over again. So that's a nice little perk when you order a decal. And I, a little advertising tip right here, I include a sticker that has my business name. So that is always very nice to include. So that way if they're using it, they remember where they got it and they're likely to purchase again. And then I have these little thank you stickers I put on the, the bags as well. And I also have a how to apply your vinyl decal instructions that I include on top of the bag. And then these are the little mailers I use. They're just regular old poly bags, um, but they I found that they're pretty good. They're really good. I've been using this type for about six months now and I like them a lot. So now I will go ahead and show y'all how I package everything up. I always start by printing my invoices and handwriting a thank you note. I have come to find that customers really like this and it truly adds to the handmade side of things and reminds people that they are supporting a small business and really are likely to purchase again. Next, I put everything together that I mentioned before and stick it all inside of my cello bag. So I put a piece of vinyl right here to cover up the names and addresses, but if I have a decal that is less than the size of a 9.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock, I will put the full sheet behind the decal and then I will include this in the 11 by 14 cello bag. So that's how I'll ship decals if they fit in this size. Okay, so normally if I have large decals like this, 
I will sh roll them up and ship them in a 12 by 4 by 4 box but I don't have any of those right now because of everything going on with the quarantine stuff. A lot of my suppliers are running behind or aren't shipping at all at this time. So what I'll do if I'm shorthanded with that, I'll get a piece of cardboard and I will take this little handy box, I don't know if it's a box trimmer, but I use it as a box trimmer and I will cut it in the size that I need for the decal. So I'll cut it just a little bit over the size and then I will include that into the backing of my decal. So I'll go ahead and show y'all how I do that now. How cool is that? See, it fits perfectly behind it. And then I will take the order slip, which let me get it ready for that. It's right here. And I'll include this into the package. Include my alcohol prep pad with my swab. And, and then I will take one of my, which let's see if it fits. I'll include it in with just one of these cello bags. If it doesn't, I'll put it in two. So I'll show y'all how I do that. So this one's gonna be cutting it close. So as you can see, it does not quite fit. There's a little bit of overhang right here. So what I'll do is I will get two bags. And I probably need to order a larger size, but right now I will just take a second one I'll fold this over like that and then I will put it upside down into another bag like that and then fold it over again and then of course I'll take the sticky part off and have it secure but that is how I will do that. And then I'll put my instructions on the top of that as well. Okay, so I have all of my orders finished. And um, on top of each section, I have the small mailers and then the large and medium mailers ready and then my packing slips. So I'm going to go ahead and package all of these up and then they will be ready to go to the post office. Does anyone else find themselves sitting in the floor working? I don't know what it is, but I always end up in the floor. <laughs> So something really important when you're shipping decals first class and something I did not know in the beginning is to put something in your bag that makes it at least like half an inch thick or so. I used regular packing peanuts, one in each bag. So before I did this, I actually got a letter in the mail stating it was not classified as first class when it is perfectly flat. It had to have thickness to it. They actually charged a few of my customers priority mail pricing this way, which is absolutely crazy. So yeah, include a packing peanut and you'll be good. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so now I have all of my orders wrapped up. I have them turned around just because they have addresses and stuff on them, but on the larger ones, I wrote, I write, um, please do not bend on them uh, just to help minimize any damage, but that is done. And that is how I wrap up my decals. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see y'all in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.